Good day, fellow learners. Once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapos, joining you from our dining area here at our summer home in Baguio City. So we're now on our case number nine. And before we start our analysis, let me first ask you to please join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NCLEX RN application and interview to 100 nurses, the less fortunate brothers and sisters that we have in the Visayas and Mindanao areas. We have done this in the past two years. And last year alone, we gave out 106 scholarships. So to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. Thank you. And I'd like to make this public advisory that Dr. Ray Agapos, that's me, and the mentors of the Ray Agapos system are not part of another review center named Gapos Review Academy. So if you want our group and our system to coach you for your NGN preparations, please do come at the Ray A. Gapos Review System. So if you don't see any one of us in your class, that's not a Ray Gapos Review System class. So make sure that you get to see any one of our Philippine-based mentors. So on to our case number nine. But before we do so, let me first say congratulations to Mara Micaela Mendoza, Triple M, who is now a registered nurse in the state of New York from Lyceum of the Philippines University, Batangas. She took the test last July 13, 2024. That's just how many days back, okay? Let's learn from her success story. I took my exam last July 13, 2024 and passed the exam stop after the 85th question. It took me around an hour and 15 minutes to finish the 85 questions. That quite, that's quite fast. I really thought that I would fail the exam because I haven't been struggling with the review since I have a two-month-old baby. Uh, she has been struggling with the review. I just listened to comprehensive lectures and attended online quick fix twice. And then paulit ulit ko po siya pinapakinggan one week before my exam. So she repeatedly listened to it. I read NCLEX 311 during the day of my exam and it really helped me a lot. Look, she read my new book, NCLEX RN 311 a day before her exam, on the day of her exam. I'm really grateful to the Ray Agapos Review System, to our mentors, coordinators, IT staff, and most especially, Sir Ray, for helping me prepare and pass the NCLEX exam. I hope you continue helping other nurses fulfill their American dream. You are doing the Lord's work. Again, thank you so much and God bless. That's Mara Micaela Mendoza from Lyceum of the Philippines, Batangas. Okay, now let's talk about vaccines for the pregnant client. But once again, before we do that, let me introduce to you my new edition of my NCLEX RN311. It's called the Next Generation Quick Fix Edition. How is it different? Well, if you would browse through it, it's in full color. And there you go. You have a lot of NGN questions. And of course, it has the very unique method from our system, functional concepts. And of course, it has a complete set of rational and key points. So here's another lady who passed the test using this book. Let's hear from her about her success recipe. If you have time and means to attend the three-day quick fix face-to-face, -face, please do. And the magic NCLEX 311 book. So this is what she's talking about. Please get the new one as well and have it signed by the one and only Sir Ray Gapos, why? That's our success recipe. So first, let's congratulate Rhea Christine Jose from Mabini Colleges Diet Camarines Norte who passed the New York Board of Nursing last July 18, 2024. And she had her book signed by me and I placed here to Rhea, may this book inspire your way to the USA. She, she just did that, okay? Rhea Christine Jose from Diet Camarines Norte. Okay, now on to our NCLEX RN concept for this video. So we're gonna talk about vaccines for pregnant client, for the pregnant client. And so let's begin with a functional concept. According to the Centers for Disease Control, a pregnant woman should get it, should get it, I, inactivated flu vaccine, 
um, this is the injection, not the live nasal flu vaccine, because the live vaccine can potentially um, get through the uh, bloodstream and then gets passed down to the fetus who may not necessarily have the immune system capability to fight off even okay, the, the, the live attenuated virus, okay? So, and T, you have your TDAP, tetanus, diphtheria, and a cellular pertussis vaccine. So, what are the indications for influenza vaccine? One, pregnant clients should have it. Those who are from six months to 59 months and 50 years old and above, those who are taking aspirin, specifically the children and adolescents from six months to 18 years old, because... For people uh, who would usually have taken aspirin or are still taking aspirin, they have increased risk of developing race syndrome, which is toxic encephalopathy, inflammation of the brain, and hepatopathy, inflammation of the liver, when they are exposed to the influenza virus. So to prevent or to lessen their chance of developing race syndrome while taking aspirin, they need the influenza vaccine. So those who are immunocompromised, um, either through the presence of your HIV infection or undergoing treatment that may cause their immune system to be depressed, like those who are undergoing radiation therapy, chemotherapy, individuals with obesity, with body mass index above 40, Native Americans and nursing home residents. Okay, these are the indications for the flu vaccine. Or in other words, you have the COVID there, pain, okay? Letter P is just single, all the rest are double. Double A, double I, double N, okay? Now, who should get, who should not get a flu vaccine? Children below six months of age should not get it. People with severe life-threatening allergies to any ingredient in a vaccine. And people who have had allergic reaction to a dose of influenza vaccine. Now, these three groups should not be given a flu vaccine. However, there's another group of people who needs to talk to their healthcare provider before getting a flu shot. We're not saying that they should not be getting a flu shot. What we're saying is they first need to discuss the pros and cons of having the flu shot if they belong to any of these groups of people. People with history of Guillain-Barre syndrome, we know for a fact that Guillain-Barre syndrome um, can be associated with either having influenza or getting the flu vaccine or influenza vaccine. So it's important that people with history of Guillain-Barre syndrome should first discuss the matter to their healthcare provider before getting their flu shot. So people who have had severe allergic reaction to a dose of any other flu vaccine, that could simply mean that there could be something in the vaccine that they are allergic to, and they need to discuss that with their healthcare provider and people who are feeling sick, okay? So allergy to eggs is not a contraindication to flu vaccines. Now, this is a new guideline from the Centers for Disease Control for um, effective 2023 to 2024 season, the, uh, it has been found that the allergy that is triggered by the administration of flu vaccines is not life-threatening enough. So contrary to their previous guide specifying that if a person is allergic to egg, they would need to have their flu vaccine in a medical facility that is capable of addressing allergic reactions. Now, that is no longer being advocated. So once again, clients, whether they are allergic to egg-based or non-egg-based flu vaccines, they can take the flu vaccine in any setting because the allergic reaction that's triggered by um, flu vaccine to people who are allergic to egg or any egg-related components of a vaccine is not serious enough. So which means even if a client is allergic to eggs, they can still get their flu vaccine. And of course your TDAP vaccine can prevent tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, and the booster shot should be given every 
10 years, okay? Getting a TDAP between 27 to 36 weeks of pregnancy lowers the risk of whooping calf or diphtheria in babies less than two months of age because beginning at two months of age, the baby would usually be vaccinated with your whooping calf vaccine, okay? So if the baby is below two months and the mother did not get your TDAP vaccine between 27 to 36 weeks of pregnancy, there's a chance that the baby is at risk for diphtheria or whooping cough. Now, on to our case number nine. A woman brings her one-month-old baby to the emergency department due to fever, nasal discharge, sneezing, and a violent coughing that ends in a whoop. So that description alone to me means that the woman's baby could be suffering from diphtheria or whooping cough. Assessment reveals that the woman failed to have her last vaccine before giving birth to her baby. Mm. This is very, very relevant to the functional concepts that we discussed. So here's a question. Which of the following vaccines did the client fail to have before delivering her baby? Is it hepatitis B? It's option one. Two, inactivated influenza vaccine. Or three, tetanus diphtheria and a cellular pertussis. Or four, measles. Definitely. The pregnant client is not required to have measles vaccine, neither hepatitis during the last trimester of pregnancy. They're only required to get the number IT, an activated influenza vaccine, plus your TDAP. But in this case, since the baby most likely is having whooping cough or diphtheria, so there has been a failure to get the tetanus, diphtheria, and a cellular pertussis vaccine. So let me invite you once again to join our hundreds of thousands of classes from across the globe, from more than 33 countries worldwide who have benefited from the Ray Gapo system. So um, the question that you also need to address if you're preparing for your next generation NPLEX class would be, how do you deal with studying using technology? So here at the Ray Gapo system, we have our own set of learning tools, books, and the latest of it is actually my NCLEX RN311, the next generation quick fix edition that comes in full color. Okay. And of course, I'd like also to highlight the fact that we have our own learning management system. We have our own app. We also have our own QBank. So if you may want to use it, please feel free to do so. And of course, you need a conducive environment in order for you to keep your focus when you're studying for the next generation NPLEX RN. And here at the Ray Gapo system, we have our own next generation NPLEX simulation laboratory. We also have a class that's tailor-made for your needs and with very, very adequate resources and learning tools for everyone, okay? So may I invite you again to join the Next Generation NPLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NPLEX RN, your choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, the QBank plus the three books, and of course, engine strategies and sample questions by me. Okay, and I invite you to attend a quick fix sessions, um, the three day sessions, including the three books. The fee starts at 3,499 pesos. And of course, get the chance to get the new edition of my NPEX RN311, the next generation quick fix edition. Okay, and at the back, you have the three strategies that you need to use engage in in order to pass NGN. So once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy Ray Gapus at your service. And to those who are about to take your test, good luck and God bless. Believe that you can and you will. See you in our next learning and teaching session.